the studio is the former Brexit minister and Conservative MP for Fairham, Suella Braverman, uh, member of that European research group. I don't think you're going to take this lying down from the presence of France. The anger mongers backed by fake news promise anything and everything. Anger monger. Liar. <laughs> The equivalent of Satan. Is that what I look like? I don't, I, did he say Satan? I don't think that's no, no, he didn't slightly say that. Over, he did, he overstating it. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I think that it's obviously it's a it's a very disappointing message from a world leader, and I I I take it with a as a with a pinch of salt. Basically. But it isn't a, the, the serious substantive point here is that the claims made. And I didn't track everything you said during the campaign, but during the referendum campaign, the general sense was that the European nations with their trade surplus would be so desperate to do a deal that a deal would be easy and you just have to admit that it's been anything but easy Emmanuel Macron not showing much flexibility right now either. I don't think the speech of a one political leader is reflective of the economic dynamic between the UK and the rest of the EU. Mm. We have a very strong economic position because of our trade deficit. But the, Look but at the, the economies of France. They're not playing it on economics, are they? They're treating it as a political question. I just wonder yes. if that's a, a miscalculation on the part of, uh, you know, and so yes, there is economic leverage, but clearly people like Emmanuel Macron and others see this as a political project that they want to pursue and have therefore not been as flexible or accommodating as had been communicated to us during the referendum by the campaign of which you remember. I, I think the EU is definitely guilty of intransigence in this, mm. these negotiations and they have put obstacles up at every step of the, uh, the route which have not been uh, easy. But I, don't, I, I still uh, believe in our fundamental strength, not only economically but also politically. The UK is a strong political voice yes. uh, in the EU. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't doubt that, and I don't doubt that you believe it. But if they don't believe it, then there's, the leverage isn't there, is it? Because if they genuinely believe, for example, that no deal, whatever the reality, whatever you believe about econo economics for forecasting, if they don't believe, or if they do believe that no deal is much worse for us than them, they will continue to act like this. And there's not much you can do about it. Well, well there is, actually. And we can exercise our huge leverage by walking away from these negotiations. Oh, right. And I think that would completely uh, change the tone of a speech from Macron if that were to happen. Uh, and unfortunately, because of machinations in Parliament, the EU have assumed that that might not happen. But it is technically still possible. Well, this is very interesting. OK, so say, let's go with this. Right, so we, we, we go with no deal. Mm. How do you think Macron, uh, the French president's speech, would change? Well, I think it's very we difficult no for me deal. to speak. No, no, uh, but, but, but this is the claim you just but, made. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm genuinely quite. Int I mean, he would. I, I'm guessing, well, he would be calculating that we would see chaos on, in Kent, for example. Um, you're saying we won't see that, everything will be fine. I don't think we will see the Armageddon that has been predicted. Well, that's, that's by various quite a sources. low bar, isn't it? Let's say it's short of Armageddon. But not particularly pretty. You know, difficult, seems chaotic, helicopters go up, they're accused. This is possible, plausible. Your former colleagues are renting out ferries and Eurostar terminals and so on. You know, these things are actually happening rather than claims that they're happening. Mm. If they begin to happen, that doesn't help your case, does it? I'm not saying a WTO Brexit will be without challenge. But there will, those challenges are surmountable. We've already put into place extensive plans and contingency measures. So have the EU and other member states to, um, to minimise any disruption. So queues at, the, at Dover, um, you know, we've got an operation. Operation Brock is there to accommodate any potential queues. But it's, it's very possible that they might not even materialise because of arrangements. Um, and at, at the end of the day, because French and German importers will want to get their goods to purchase mm in the UK. So at the end of the day, there might be political postulating, but businesses and jobs will count for a lot more than a speech by Emmanuel, Ma Emmanuel Macron. OK, so let's, let's get very real. If no deal, as you want to happen, does occur, this month we will lodge, well, a tariff schedule. There's a statutory instrument that has to be laid. I don't know why it hasn't been laid yet. And that will change the tariff rates for every single good that comes in uh, to the UK, not to mention the ones that we'd also have to pay for our exports. Do you know what's in that? Uh, surely businesses should know by now. Uh, what's the strategy? Who's the winners? Who's the losers from what is a huge change to our trading conditions? Mm. 
I agree that is what will happen if we do go opt for a WTO Brexit. Um, but we have the choice on tariffs, actually, uh, to reduce tariffs if we want yes. to. Um, and we have the there will be a revenue generally if, if tariffs are imposed in our favour. That money can be ploughed back into uh, various industries and businesses to support. Do you know them. what the approach is? They've already the cabinet, the cabinet subcommittee has already decided. They're just waiting on this statutory instrument. There'll be winners and losers from that. Surely, as an MP or as the public need, need to know. There, there are various measures and statutory instruments. There are hundreds of statutory instruments relating to No Deal which have been made and laid and which have been uh, assented to. We are making very good progress on that front, actually. Uh, and when it comes to tariff schedules, yes, that will, will happen. It's not the government's policy at the moment because the government still, is still trying to get a deal through Parliament. I don't know if you saw Martin Howe's intervention and others like Dan Hannan on your side of the argument suggesting actually an extension, I mean they don't want an extension, but it's uh, the least worst option going forward. They would rather have an extension of three months, even two years, than go for Mrs May's deal. Do you back that? I'm not going to, if we get to that point, I'm not going to vote in favour of any extension and that would not be desirable at all. Okay. I think that would be... Uh, a really bad situation to okay, get into. Are we ready? You're a former Brexit minister. Are we ready for no deal this month? Yes or no? I think we can be. If there is the political will and strong leadership, we, uh, we heard from George Eustace, our most recent resigning minister last week, who said actually from the inside track, um, preparations are very advanced and we're good to go. So actually I think we should have more confidence in our preparations. There will be challenges, but I do think that if we uh, prepare businesses, prepare the country for, that, for those challenges, I think that uh, ultimately we will, we will thrive. Well, there we go. Thank you very much for that, Suella Braverman, Conservative MP.